morning, everyone. My name is Alfredo with Alfredo Sado Glass here in Corona, California. And once again, I want to share a new tool for you guys. Um, it's been very helpful for me. I had it for over a month. And I like to test tools, things before I recommend them. So it's a great tool. I'm really happy with it. So I wanted to share that tool with you guys. And we're getting old. So, I mean, I'm almost 20 years into auto glass and it, it cuts up to you, your arm, your shoulders, your back. So you name it. But anyways, we got to work smart. So we got to use the tools that are available for us to make our job easier. I highly, highly recommend always being updated with the tools that are in the market for us to help our jobs safer and easier for us. So anyways, today I'm going to be working on this 2018 Jaguar F-Pace. And so let's get started with the installation. As you can see, I already prepped the vehicle. So it's ready to be worked on. We did our pre-inspection. Pre-inspections will save you a headache and a lot of money. So how we do your pre-inspection. So we're gonna start with the inside. So let me grab some tools and let's go to the inside. So this could be sometimes intimidating because of the ADA advanced driving assist system. So don't be intimidated. Just another car. So all right, this one's similar to a Chrysler. Um, so let's start by removing the lower bottom cover. If it comes down towards you, just go very soft. It already came out from this side. So as you can see, I'm just plying down. This is what goes into the bracket. So remove that i always like to place the parts in the back seat get them out of the way and now let's remove the rear view mirror so this one looks like a european you grab a hook tool and just do that it comes right off now the upper cover um same thing just ply off as you can see right now it's a lot easier to remove this when this is off. So when we're ready to put it back, we'll put this one in first before putting the rest of the mirror back on. So now, get this out of the way. There's brackets on the rain sensors. Um, what you do, you pull down here. Okay, as you can see, I just pull down and then keep pulling down a little bit more. Okay, now it's completely loose. Don't force it. Now with my hook tool, slowly start separating. You don't want to break anything. Just like that. As you can see, this is one of those that um, it has the opening for the cameras, but they actually don't have the cameras on it. So um if you're trying to pre-scan pre-scan this it's giving you no connections because it has no no ADAS system okay so this little um bracket okay there's one little bracket there so um you could push just gently okay you do not want to lose a little piece hang on one second let me grab it okay so this is the piece that you do not want to lose because this locks your condensation sensor in place. So keep that aside. Okay, so I'm gonna push from the back. Give me some space to insert my tack puller and separate it. Okay, so sometimes you're gonna have to, this one's transfer them to the new glass. So I'm just squeezing here. You do not want to break it because they are going to have to be transferred to the next windshield. So this is the right and the left. So we'll just leave this here for now. Um, if you like, you could just push here, remove the rear view mirrors, kind of heavy. Um, and all right, let's get to the inside of the hood. Okay, 
Okay, so I'm going to be using a setting tool on this vehicle. If I didn't, if I did, if I knew that I didn't have the ADAS system, then I would have uh, put the car there because you don't want to turn the car on without the camera. It gives you all kinds of different codes. So, Line up right here. See where I'm going. So once I put it in, I put it on neutral, so you can see now it's right where it needs to be. the vehicle doesn't move on you so and that right there is for my sitting tool um, it's called the panther pro very very useful tool but um we'll set that up in a little bit we don't have to set that up right now this gets to the bottom of the hood under the hood so Let's start by removing the wipers. Let's get the wipers out of the way. That seems to be, is there a 15 or 16? 15. All right, so there's, nowadays there's a lot of wipers where you need to have the switch on so they don't move on you. So if you move one and it starts to move, that means you gotta go turn the switch on. Um, this is where I always take a picture in my mind. Back in the days, I used to take a picture, um, a real picture, but now I kind of got used to that. So now I pay very much attention where the windshield wipers part, make it easier on me when I'm ready to install them. This one's come, come off fairly easy. So what I like about my sitting tool, you don't have it but when you're removing things. Of course, it's the step tool, and it helps you remove parts. Okay, so now we have to remove the cowling and the side moldings. On the side moldings, there is this clip that we have to remove prior to removing the cowling because this is on to the cowling. See, there's a clip. It's on the molding, it's not gonna come off. So right here, just separating it, separating it from under the fender and just slowly you can use a tool to remove it, but I, I done several of these ones and you can just pull it up really, really easy. Same thing on the other side. Turn it off from the fender right there, and then just start pulling up. So on this one, if you would have had the um, ADAS system, which is coming on the next magazine, uh, you see these little brackets right here? They're kind of holding into the brackets. So you gotta push these ones down, and then the bottom part of the camera hooks up to there. So you'll push this down and slide the camera up. So, but this one is not the case. So now let's remove the windshield wiper, wiper fluid. Uh, sometimes this hose likes to be freewheeling and goes under the fender and then you're in big trouble. So pay attention where you put it. I always try to find a little hole where I could 
hook it up to. That way it doesn't fall off on me. Um, okay, time for removal of these clips. These clips are very much like the ones from Ford, where they come off fairly easy. These ones you gotta feel it because they could come off and fall off in, in the hood. So get a feel for it and see if it's the ones that are easy to remove or and it's gonna stay there or not. So for these ones, the ones that are like there's like a Phillips head, just go by hand really soft, just enough to get it started so you could pull it up with a tack puller you just got to go really gentle because otherwise they just keep on turning so thanks God this year has been really busy for us and have been non-stop which thanks God, because a lot of businesses unfortunately are hurting. But our business is definitely essential. Got to have people back in the road. So that's a blessing for us in our industry. So this side is removed already. So I'm just gonna get started, save me some time, and start removing the bottom part of the cowling. Let's hold on to the. Um, Retainer molding on the glass. Yep, patience. Clip for clip. Every clip matters. My goal is always to for everything as I found it, if not better. Sometimes there's little things here and there from the factory. And our job is to bring it back to safety. For all those young guys out there that are studying auto glass, the new generation, Please utilize all these new tools. You'll be, you'll be very happy you did in 20 years from now. Back in the days, we used to use a lot of tools that require a lot of physical work in order to, to use them. And sooner or later, you'll pay for it. With your shoulders, your back, your wrist okay looks like got one more okay so this is ready to be removed but there's one clip one uh, connector right here okay you gotta be very careful either push or pull but they it'll it could break really really easy from the bracket so what i do i unplug it <clears throat> otherwise you could break it really 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 easy Once again, patience. If you were to pull this off and you get stuck, you end up ripping up the connector. So always be patient. 
Okay, so this is done right here and <clears throat> time for the removal. So I'm gonna be using my spider um, on this one. And I'm going to be showing you this new drill I had for maybe a little bit over six months uh, from Milwaukee. And I really like it. This drill, I literally, I pretty, basically only use it for the spider. That's it. Because I have the attachment already in it. So it's, it's it stays there. It doesn't move. So this drill is only for my spider. Okay, so. On your spider, I always try to go as low as possible. I like to go right before the middle. And when you take your time, you have the right tools. It's like having a whole bunch of toys when you were a kid. Just playing with tools, enjoying your job. And at the end, you have a great result. So, let me show you a technique. Maybe I show, showed it to you guys before in other videos, but, um, so this one, does, it really doesn't matter because you can see the fiber line get tucked in behind the glass safely. And I say that safely because on some vehicles, it could drop like right here, and then you end up cutting into the firewall. So what I do, I go in between the molding and it actually makes the cut a little easier too. So. So just go like that. For all of the, those of you that are starting to buy these new tools, this is very important because otherwise you end up really destroying a firewall and that compromises the safety of the vehicle. So, so what you could do, you could separate it beforehand go like this before you put your fiber line in create a little opening so that when you do put your fiber line it goes in a lot easier by doing this it assures you that you're not going to cut into the firewall 100 percent so it's a good tip. Right here, you have to be careful that your tool does not slip off and damage anything. So right here, you can see it's a little difficult. So I'm just gonna open it up a little bit before I continue. In the same way that you could damage a firewall, you could damage a dash. So get yourself a dash cover. Don't forget, I sell them, so. Thanks, th I want to say thank you to everyone that has bought one. You guys have been keeping me busy. So, thank you for all those big companies that have bought several of them at another time. Thank you, and I really hope they've been very, very useful to you guys. 
I know it's saved me many times from scratching the dash. And the reason why I know that is because you can see all the scratches on the actual dash cover. Yes, you can do it yourself, but if you buy mine, I already have all the design, the cutouts I developed so that it tucks in underneath it, behind the dash, between the glass and the dash. So as you guys can see right here, I'm not gonna finish lacing the fiber line all the way because the curvature of the glass, if I do that, then my fiber line is gonna stick out and be in the roof and then scratch the roof. So I'm gonna leave it like this. All right, so let's go from the inside, start cutting it out. Okay. Always on number, when your lowest torque here. You see how even the dash cover is protecting from my, even my tool. On this time, I wasn't really outside looking at the bin number because I could already see that my dash cover protects my bin 100%. But you still want to go easy and slow. You do not want to replace a, a VIN. It's a lot of trouble to replace a VIN number. So, always be careful with the VIN number. What I like about this drill, so I just push a button and it goes in the reverse. Right there is normal to do that because it's where sometimes the, the, the seams meet. So you're cutting through thicker urethane. Could this job be done faster? Yes, of course. You could use different tools. Probably use a cold knife, but not on this vehicle. These ones are tough to cut out. So I, as you can see how the glass is breaking, that means that's stress. That means that you're, the, the, it's, it will be really hard to run the blade through there. Is it possible? Yes, but my my shoulders and my hands my my arms say no thank you no need for that So it's a little bit of slipperiness. I'm just going to get really slow. Seems like my suction cup is not holding on. But I highly doubt it's my suction cup. I have to blame it on the glass. So look, just a simple move, okay? It probably took me a couple of seconds, but if I put the suction cup, the, the, the spider right here in a better angle, I will have more power on cutting. Let me see. How funny. No, I came on down for my.
That simple. Because you don't want to break your power line. Because that's what it costs you. So if you want to save your fiber line and and don't break the, the metal, the, the pinch roll of the vehicle. So right here, I'm turning the tool like this. Kind of make a box right here. And as you can see, it's so easy to work with this tool. So I'm pretty much done with the curve right there. So now I could finally place the part line all the way around. When you're not in such a rush, you actually enjoy it. I mean, personally, I enjoy more when I don't have to be in a rush. So we book our appointments accordingly. That way I'm not in a big rush working. Because this is my career, so I want to keep doing this. I love teaching as well. So that'll be another thing that I would do in the future. But for now, I'm gonna keep doing auto blast. So I gotta be wise and use tools. So if you're using carbon line or wire, of course it's going to make it a lot easier for you and your body. So this windshield is pretty badly damaged, okay? Uh, you can see something really bad uh, broke the window. And right now, this tool that I have here, the Panther Pro, I could use it to remove the glass, but I don't believe right now for the situation I'm in that it's wise because one of my section cups could fail. So, if you ever have to remove a glass, work with the weight of the glass so you don't want to put the whole weight in your back. And you don't want to scratch or damage the vehicle. So I thought it would be easier if I had this open. <clears throat> I did not. So what I mean is so 
this is how we do it. This is for the new guys. Be careful that you're not scratching over there. Pull the glass, okay? There's rubber. Oops. There's rubber underneath. Okay. Be careful not to damage anything. And pull it out. This is how you would normally um, pick up a glass from your warehouse. So it's no different. When you're sitting the glass, then it becomes a little more difficult because you're literally up in the air if you're trying to hand sit it. But when you're removing the glass off the vehicle, slide it, slide it, and then pull this, and this will lift it up and not be so much weight on your back. As you can see, such a clean cutout. I still have everything left over, so I'm going to go ahead and clean it up and get my glass ready, prep my glass, and then I'll be right back. All right, guys, so I'm back. Now with the fun part. I'm gonna use the setting tool. So um, I, I could use, you could set up the tool beforehand, but right now, since the other glass was not in such a good condition, I didn't set up earlier, but right now before you primer the glass and, and uh, prep the body, well, I already prepped it, I just haven't primed it, uh, but the glass is clean. So, but anyways, let's get to the setting tool. So um, there's a few things you gotta learn about the tool. Um, the more you use it, the more you get used to it. So that's the first part you gotta put on. Then this part, I like to work away from the car actually fairly easy once you do it a couple of times it becomes fairly easy so that's locked in place right now it's a, a, at its lowest point so that I could reach um, so let's do the next thing this one hooks up into here and like I said the more times you do it the easier it gets and then you can raise it up so um, I Loosen this one up. I'm holding it and then I turn this one so that it goes up. And once it starts to go up where I want it to, I'll probably do one more. Right there, it's good. You want it to be higher than uh, the roof of the vehicle. So now this action cup, I like to set the glass with this setting tool from the passenger side. So. I learned that put this towards the middle and in an, in an angle allows me to move the glass around much easier. That's just a personal preference. I mean, it doesn't have to be that exact same way, but that's just my own personal, personal preference. And then this one, I like to have it right here, like this so that I could move this thing correctly. Test it out, make sure everything's good. And now, grab the tool, the one that is closer to the button, that's the one to go up. And the one with more space in the bottom, that's to go down. As you can see, I'm going down right now. Okay, so now go up a little bit. This one's gonna go right here. Let me put a step tool. This one slides in and out. Well, this is where I normally like to have it. So start lifting up the glass. As you can see right here, I can feel that I'm not very comfortable with this suction cup right here. So I always reset. Okay, I like to lift it up as high as possible. Once again, you don't want to go too fast. On this one, I put it level. Go under the hood on my side. Just 
low. I put tape so that I can have control. A little lower. Now I can see that I could go that way a little bit more. Okay. Look at the top. Now keep lowering it. There's that that setting clip over there. So there it is. Classic set. And that's with these setting pins. So that makes it a little bit more difficult. So when you're new, if you want to remove them, that'll probably make it a lot easier. But once you put, this is actually a difficult one because uh, the glass goes under the hood. A lot of times on BMWs, Mercedes, or this type of cars, you have the hood up to be able to get underneath there. But with this tool, you have full control. So you're able to uh, tuck in the glass under the, the hood and then set. But as you can see, this is the first time I said it. Is, this is like my little practice. So if I want to move this or the second cup lower, this would be the time. Probably just gonna move it so that I can see when I'm setting it. Okay, now I'm gonna lift it up. So like if you, the, the glass that you had previously wasn't that broken, you could have remove the glass with the tool. It literally took me, I don't know, less than two minutes, three minutes, which that's still very reasonable to take all the weight off my back. Not only that, um, I get a precise set, uh, safe set, and I don't have to mess around. So um, I'm gonna finish prepping the glass. I'm gonna flip it really quick prep the body, shoot the urethane, and I'll come back for the set. Hey guys, I get a lot of questions and reasons why would I not shoot the glass on some vehicles. So here's another reason why. So for me, it's very important to apply the urethane right where it was before. That way I have the best bonding chain possible. As you can see right here, it goes out more and how it curves down and how it does that wiggle right there. So and on the other side it's the opposite it's kind of completely straight and it goes straight down so there's a lot of different space uh in between the corner of the glass and where the urethane goes so for that reason it's it's a hit and miss and i don't want to hit and miss i want to be accurate where my urethane goes so for that reason i'm going to apply the urethane on the glass on the vehicle uh, another major factor is a lot of these vehicles get wax, polish, all the environmental, uh, you know, that is exposed to uh, the, the elements of the environment. It comes down and then it goes right above the urethane uh, line. If you were to just apply primer, you're applying primer on all kinds of different coatings which is not safe for that reason. Um, I mean, unless you clean it, decontaminate, uh, scuff it up and then prime it, but why are you gonna go through all of that? So in this case, I'm going to apply the urethane on the body of the vehicle. So just a, a thought. All right guys, so this is the part that you kind of have to hurry because I already applied the urethane. So have conscience for everything, so. The time that you want to take your time with when you're setting it. Keep in conscience that you already applied the urethane, so. Okay, so now I'm going to set this. in so my sitting pin over there is hanging on so I'm dropping it down so that it's, it's in place perfecting the glass 
Make sure it's centered correctly. Please know this takes practice. Probably by the third windshield that you do, you'll get it down. <laughs> you have to set it with the tool. Make sure you drop it all the way down. That way it allows you to deck correctly. I'm just gonna leave this one here. Right now what I'm worried about is decking. If I made it look easy, please know, like I said, I already used the tool a couple of times. Practice, practice. Even if you have just one vehicle uh, uh, that you can spend your time in, when you first get the tool, just practice, practice. Release this one. This one. When I go to the other side, it's already released. On big wind chills, this is extremely helpful because of how heavy and how high. This is like probably at its lowest, so it can go a lot, a lot higher than what it is right now. I'll probably show you in a little bit how high it can really go. But that was the setting guys, as you can see, that was fairly easy. Um, even though you're, I'm, I'm at a shop, it just makes it so much easier and convenient for me, for all of us here at the shop. So anyways, this one, so right now it's at its lowest, so it goes, all the way down here you saw me putting it in so if you wanted it to go even higher first of all this one goes higher you'll see a red line that's when you stop i'm not going to go all the way to the red line but and then when you're ready to put it back in place Okay, I'm gonna make sure this thing, so that when it clips, it clips in place. Actually, I'm gonna do one more. There it is, loosen up the back. So first we're gonna remove this one right here. Oh, and the other cool thing about this, that this whole thing slides, um, this slides back and forth, so if you're Gotta go more that way, or gotta go back the other direction. You could always slide it back up, which is very convenient. So now I'm gonna release this little clip right here. And like I said, away from the car, just slow. And you could remove the entire thing so it's not on your way. And that's it. So let's go back with our installation. Oh, I forgot to mention, this is very helpful. Even though it's just two layers of tape, um, it, it really helps. Even if you just bump the glass for a second, it helps you not to damage the glass, not to scratch the vehicle. And I normally use this on windshields that go under the hood. Even if you have a, a helper sitting in the glass, because sometimes when you slide it down under the hood, it could easily touch the hood. So just to save a little scratch in the vehicle. Very, very, very helpful. Okay, so my last final touches of decking. Very important. <laughs> You don't want to over deck either. Then it's gonna be a nightmare to remove it. Just be conscious. So my hands, my gloves are clean. When I was prepping the glass, so 
Let's do the inside first. Can you grab something? I'll be right back. Cloth and I went to get these things um, earlier from the glass and all you gotta do is like slide it down and they slide down. I don't I don't want to do it right now, that's why I did it outside. You slide it down and then uh, when you're ready to put it on and slide it back up. What did I just do? I just got it stuck with the clip on the back. So now I have to take it off. Okay, so you slide it down and then to put it back on you line it up one side the other side and clip it back on so you have to clean this before you put your rain sensor you got to make sure there's no bubbles in your rain sensor and you just go in reverse order open this up right here because this is what actually going to lock it in place okay i'm Making sure there was no bubbles. Thanks God. Glory to God, there was no bubbles. So now, time to put the, um, remember, as I was saying earlier, don't lose this little clip, because this is what holds your condensation sensor. Let me put some light right here, you see. Okay, so this goes right here. And it grabs it, condensation sensor, then you just guide it. And it locks it in place. There's a little guide in the center that locks it in place. Then push this back on here. And now I'm going to install the upper cover first because I'm going to have more space right now to put it on. Never want to force something like this. Uh -uh. I think I'm a little bit too high on this side. <laughs> okay, so these ones are the ones I have to clip in. And you can see there's a line right there. Okay, let me go get another flashlight. I'll be right back. Alright guys, so the more you're able to see the better. So now my cameraman has a flashlight that he can help me with. Um, if we put too much light, then it's hard to see in the video. So um, I'm going to see with my finger, line it up like right here, put my finger. And I'm going to see from this side where the little opening for the clip goes. I snap it in place, makes it so much easier. And then of course put the mirror on this one simply slide it up slide it up correctly both sides and there it is okay now it's all the way to the top and same thing with this one you want to line it up see i'm going to put my finger where this kind of tab is put my finger there and see that it has to go through here so i'm going to put it right there i think it went out to the side there it is makes it so much easier than trying to guess where it is okay so this is done so now we can go on the outside and get back to work on the outside Can you put pox? All right, so let's go in here. It goes a lot faster once you're putting everything back in place. Just remember the correct order. So, and don't forget to plug things that you unplug. Okay. 
and line up the wipers. I'm gonna start by putting this side on first. Once again, I have my little step tool <laughs> here. Very helpful. On this type of cars, well, in any car, it's just fun to work on them and learn new things and how they're all different. Um, and as you can see, this one was fairly easy. It wasn't that difficult. It could be intimidating, the, the, the make of the vehicle, but in reality, it's just another vehicle. come back to, to this. Um, I'm going to place the windshield wipers. That way you know the position. And the molding. So line it up where it goes on the top right here sometimes there's little marks that you can see where it was previously positioned at so like right here i can see that it's a bit too high it has to go just a little bit lower because i haven't pushed them all in yet i can still slide it so now it's right there where it's supposed to be and the clip lines lines up perfectly and that's it so that's the position of the windshield wipers i'm going to come back and put everything back on uh the other molding but um thank you so much for taking the time to watch my videos i hope uh what i share with you guys helps you make your, your job easier and um Thank you for all the subscribers. Thank you for following me. Really appreciate everyone. And um, so yeah, tools, tools. Nowadays, I'm very happy to share this with you guys. It, it works for me. Um, I hope it helps you guys. And same thing with the spider. Just use all the tools that are out there. It's an investment. Uh, a back surgery, shoulder surgery, it's way more expensive uh, and painful than investing in tools. So. You're as good as your tool. So uh, thank you, everyone. Have a blessed day. And thanks for uh, watching Alberto's Auto Blast here in Corona, California.